As we continue forward with our Do One Thing devotionals, we are focusing this month on the idea of Bible engagement as a critical component of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ who makes disciples. And that's very important because we know that God's Word is one of the most important ways that we hear His voice, learn His character, and understand His will. And here at Trinity Church, we have a desire to not only know God's Word, but also to obey it. Just like the New Testament writer James says when he says, Be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So, we're going to be meditating on some key passages of Scripture about Scripture this month. And today, we're going to be focusing on Psalm 119, 145 through 152, where we read, With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I call to you, save me, that I may observe your testimonies. I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I hope in your words. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love, O Lord. According to your justice, give me life. They draw near who persecute me with evil purpose. They are far from your law, but you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your testimonies that you have founded them forever. Now, I, I don't know about you, but what stands out to me here is that the psalmist goes to great lengths to talk about how he rises before dawn to cry out to God for help. He says that he even stays awake through the watches of the night that he may meditate on God's promises. I, I love that. You know why? Because it's practical. A couple of good friends of mine do what they call flooding, and I want to tell you how it works. It's based on this concept. They say that literally the first thing they do in the morning when their eyes pop open is that they take their earbuds and they toss them into their ears, and they have scripture or worship music playing when they are showering and getting ready. Other friends go beyond that to take five-minute breaks throughout their day in order to flood their consciousness with scripture or prayer or worship. And even when I lay my head down at night, if I have even the slightest difficulty falling asleep, I roll over, I have my audio Bible rolling to fill my thoughts as I drift off. You know, I've actually learned that if I start in the book of Mark, I can usually get most of the way through the book of Acts before the batteries in my AirPods run out. But for all of us who do such things, the idea is that we seek to flood our minds and our thoughts and our actions with Scripture whenever we can. And why? Because when you flood your thoughts with the Word of God, you shouldn't be surprised if that's what comes out when you or others need a drink. And I say all the time that I'd rather people heard one word from God than 10,000 words from me. So consider how you might, like the psalmist here, flood your thoughts with the Word of God today. And we'll pray to that end as we pray now. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we do, in the name of Jesus, ask that you would remind us to flood our thoughts with your word. Father, that we, like the psalmist, would rise early to open the floodgates of your word so that scripture and your voice might be in our thoughts. Father, may there be such an entangling of your thoughts with our thoughts, your words with our words, that even we can scarcely begin to tell them apart. Yeah, Father, would we be deep wells filled with you. Would you fill our ears, our minds, our eyes, our words, and our thoughts, Father, with what you say, with what you think, and with what you are doing. And Father, would we then become wells and buckets and springs out of which your word flows to give life to others. Father, would you flood us so that we might flood the environments where you have called us to be springs of living water. Would you fill us with your spirit, Father, so that we might pour out in every relationship where you have led us. And Father, we are grateful that you have not left us alone or abandoned, wondering what you're like or what you think or what you say. We are grateful for your word. And we are grateful, Father, that it is available to us. And so I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would bless my brothers and sisters this, this day, Father, that you would bring to their mind scripture that they've memorized or things that they have seen. Father, would you let your words be their thoughts today as they go about their business? And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.